goes to, to the budget and without any additional income, which that model shows that uh, uh, the, uh, the fiscal plan is fulfilled. So depending on whether you trust the assumptions in, in, that, um, in the modeling, um, it, it addresses that, the problem that, uh, that uh, Representative Seaton has is asking us to combine two bills that have problems in addressing the single subject rule. So I don't think that the, um, the Senate is interested in, in, um, in doing that. And it has been done in the past, but not on such a major policy issue as, as this one. This is probably the, the largest policy change that uh, the legislature is going to be uh, addressing in, in a 10-year span. This is huge. Anna? Andrew. Senator McKinnon, I should say. <laughs> Andrew, uh, you know, it, it's a first step in a journey. Uh, we have uh, a lot of folks in new positions that are, uh, from my perspective, trying political maneuvers that they believe um, can accomplish what they want. But over the course of time, at least how I've worked, is the less cute stuff that you're trying to do, the less political maneuvering, the better it is for clarity for everybody. And so as Senator Hoffman said, putting two huge pieces of legislation in one bill, first of all, probably is unconstitutional. Second, uh, you either pick up people or you lose people based on the arguments and debates that you have. We chose a clean bill to go over for consideration because it made the biggest impact for the people of Alaska. And to tax, just to tax, is not a reason to have a policy conversation around that issue. Um, all I've heard is that the House wants an income tax. Well, we only have about 300, 350,000 Alaskas that could contribute. That income tax that they want to talk about cannot and will not fill the hole that Alaska faces with a $2.78 billion deficit. And so while uh, people are talking about per diem, a very important subject, potato chips in the lounge, none of those things will close, th close our budget. And so I, I think that uh, sometimes we fail to focus on the most important things that are before us. And SB 26 or something similar to that, everyone on both sides of the aisle, Republican, Democrat, or independent agree that to close a 2.78 billion with a B deficit you have to look at our earnings and start using those blending those with other revenue sources so I, I'm not saying anything is off the table but you should send a policy conversation in a single form over to the legislature for consideration and as I've said earlier this year um, we're trying to keep it um, politically possible, okay? So you have this one policy call that everyone in the building, even those that are voting no, agree it is absolutely necessary to get this budget 95%, within 95% of closing, right? Um, we had reserved votes on our floor, that's for sure. There are people that don't want to be in an uncomfortable position, but everyone in the building knows it needs to pass. We want to isolate that issue. If we walk out with that problem solved and we get a few reductions, um, I think it's a very successful session. If it gets done early, then we're, talk we're willing to talk about those, uh, those other policy calls that are um, also important to discuss. But lumping them all together is, is a way to try to get people to vote on what they want. It would be like us lumping together the dramatic cuts in the budget. I mean, you think about the objectives of the two sides. It would be like us lumping dramatic cuts of the budget in with Senate Bill 26. We just don't think it's the right way to d go. We know that this policy needs to be decided on this year, and uh, we're, the Senate is more than willing to give fair hearings to the other issues that they feel are important this year. So we're late for finance. We want to thank you all for coming. If you have follow-up questions, uh, work through Daniel. We're happy to meet with you to answer any of those questions. And uh, have a good morning and a good week.